Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Reacting Show. I'm Dika. So, last time on Bleach, we had the wrap up of the Soul Society arc. Um, we had Ichigo essentially freeing Rukia, but Rukia decided to stay back in the Soul Society and our heroes got home. We did find out what the link with everything was with regards to Rukia, why she was so important to Aizen. Well, the Aizen had gotten away, he pulled up, he called up on his homies, the Menos Grande which then they took him off to god knows where um taking Gin and tozin with him obviously the betrayal shook up everyone i mean eisen coming back to life was hard enough to deal with let alone the fact that he was a traitor along with Gin and tozin so i, I really liked how we got a, a chance to see the aftermath of all of that the other one of my other favorite things from last time was byakia and rukia's relationship um you know how everything in terms of in, in, how everything to do with them had finally was resolved for me anyway so i really loved that we got to know that ruki and her sister both made it to uh the soul society but obviously um was it asana asana yeah asana was byakuya's wife who unfortunately had to leave rukia because she was so poor before she ended up meeting byakuya getting married into the family and she could just never find her sister again so i really love their storyline and i'm glad now their relationships mended a lot of relationships i think at the end of this arc has been mended potentially opened up a lot of questions about other stuff such as um um Urahara and his intention with what he had to, like in his intention of wanting to get rukia back and because of what he had hidden in her so um all that said and done yes the gang had gotten home safe and sound you know just to carry on with everyday life and obviously everyone at the soul society was essentially going to carry on training and stay on high alert to whenever eisen decided to show back up again so now yes here we are and i'm i'm excited to see what, what happens next what new foes our enemies are good enemies what new foes our heroes are going to meet so here we are with episodes 109 and 110 Yeah, you're yelling outside Rukia's room. Please. What exactly is going on here? <laughs> if your business here is finished, then you should return to the world of the living. Mm -hmm. You know full well that you do not belong in this place. Oh, God, here he is with his DS. For him, history had always repeated itself. It was something that remained unchanged. I'm being transferred? To where? No, that's not it. We're not going to transfer you out or anything as extreme as that. We're just sending you to the world of the living. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Captain. Captain Kuski hates it when I bother him with every little detail. So, I was going to leave without saying anything to him about it. Oh. I'll tell Byakuya for you. Hmm. So go with a clear conscience. <sighs> Thank you, Captain. Congratulations, oh. Lieutenant Abadai. Yes, thanks. Uh, I mean, it is an honor. <laughs> I humbly accept, Lieutenant. When are you going to get over your insecurity with Rukia? suggest that you hurry. Rukia has just been assigned a month-long station in the world of the living and she's scheduled to leave soon. I like this. I know that this episode is essentially kind of they're making references to the filler episode before which um, I'll be honest I haven't seen but I will read up on I will I will go back to watch it but I do like how we're seeing um, um, just before Rukia went into the, the world of the living like when Renji became a lieutenant you know, kind of like the start of their relationship in relation to how I'm assuming that gen the person they mentioned in the other arc. But again, let me down. Let me know down in the comments below if there's anything of interest. I should know. I did do a bit of reading about it, but it is something I will go back to check out uh, after I watch the main series. Pushed along by forces beyond our control. Got the first episode. Not Yoshino. This is Ron Tao. So why? Why would you help me? 
So I'm guessing this is what happened. That's a really good analogy he's talking about there. And I do like that bit in the beginning I thought was potentially when he had come back from uh, fighting Aizen. But I, th I think it might be before he even met Rukia. So I think he always had this sense of foreboding where, you know, he went and took out the plane. He was starting to see spirits and he saw the little spirit. He didn't know what happened to the child. And we, we all kind of know now, you know, that poor little spirit was probably attacked by a hollow eaten by a hollow um so he went to take the plane and obviously i saw that reaction on um orihime's face where she kind of wanted to be with each other so unless that was sort of hindering to that but i do i do like how what each was essentially feeling right at the beginning of the show has kind of been reflected in his last battle with karia how things have always remained the same for him by the bits of flashback we get have always remained the same for him yet he got all this power yet it corrupted him and he's looking and he's worried that it might do the same but we can't already know hollow ichigo is literally a fight within himself so that's a very good analogy i like that seemed to view all of history as a vicious cycle he probably thought he could use force to sever it and stop the cycle and if it does repeat should we try to break that cycle or resign our Oh, who's this? Well, well, what a charming little city. And so far before the fate was Yeah, this is exactly how it starts for Rukia. Who is that guy? That world where the hollows are. Remember those those supreme hollows? What is this? Is this no it can't be ground fishing? Oh, The other thing, oh. his back. Wait a sec, Tusky. You, you could can see, see it. This? Uh -huh. I mean, way back all the way when Ichigo was getting his power up, and I think when he somehow unintentionally influenced all his friends to be able to see spirits, she was part of that because she saw that guy on the roof. Like she could not the guy on the roof. She could sense spirits, or she could see spirits when uh, when Ichigo was trying to when he was having that big pissing contest. I think it was with. Um, Uru, who could get rid of the most hollows? Yeah. Is he the exchange student? Yes, he is. He's wearing the uniform. Okay, so that's it. Goodbye! <laughs> Take your time! Hey, wait! Why are you dressed up like a soul reaper? He's actually walking in air. Could literally remove his face. He's gonna see Cole. It was Grand I 
Felicia. Scary as shit. So that was episodes 109 and 110. Uh, so 109 seemed like a wrap up episode or kind of like the ending of what happened with the bounce. So from what I got from the main important stuff from there is how Ichigo was kind of comparing himself. I and I like just in general how they were looking at the uh, what was his name? Was his Karia? So his ambition to wanting to change fate and how he wanted to control it, and how Ichigo was worried would he essentially end up like him? Um, so that was a really nice wrap up of that episode and we were looking at how fate and everything repeats itself because we got to see essentially how the story started for or where everyone was when the story started you know we had rukia we had um renji and even ichigo and like i mentioned in the reaction he always felt that sort of we uh, abode away to spirit but getting into 110 now um and i don't know if they had during the filler arc is when they spoke about it because i remember in my last reaction uru doesn't have spiritual energy well spiritual pressure anymore he had lost that ability when he used his final attack on mayuri so we meet shinji hirako who he's described himself as a visort and so he it's a soul. I'm assuming he's a soul reaper. So he's got some puck toes, a soul reaper, and he's got a hollow mask. Just like Hollow Ichigo, he said that he. And I think this was also the form that uh, Aizen was trying to. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. This ability, ooh, this ability to pass over, like have the power. So you hit your limit as a soul reaper, and then you go beyond that, and you become. You're still human, but you don't become. Uh, sorry, you're still. Uh, a soul reaper but you don't become a full-blown hollow um so he said he's of a sword and then he recognizes ichigo as one as well because ichigo well hollow dark ichigo became like that and the last time we saw him is when he went up up against byakuya and again that's the ultimate being that uh, aizen wants to become because he knows that his powers are limited in that form but he wants to have the ability or the powers to become of a sword so we met this gentleman uh he clearly knows a lot about ichigo um and i wonder what his story is i liked how even even with um Uryu unable to fight he was able to fill up his zintos with spiritual pr uh, energy when he was in the soul society but we had while ichigo was out and about you know doing his soul reaping um Cone unfortunately got stuck with Grand Fisher, so yeah, I didn't realize that was Grand Fisher. I thought was that Grand Fisher, but I do not remember him being like that. I mean, Grand Fisher has he mummified himself and had a bit of an upgrade, you know, to the point he could remove his hollow mask and you could see what he was before he became a hollow. So, Grand Fisher is out to get Ichigo um, for their last fight. Unfortunately, he's come across Cone Ichigo. Um, we had that Menos Grande, well, it must have been a Menos Grande, because that hollow was huge. And then we had Uru that was saved by his father, um, Ryoken. Now, I'm sure in the flashback, Ryoken never had white hair. I'm not going to lie, he looks really good. He looks impeccable with his white hair and outfit. But we had um, 
we not yeah we had his dad Rio Ken turning up saving him and you know but by the sounds of their conversation I don't know if Uru I thought Uru still lived I know Uru was raised by his grandfather and he lived with his grandfather because he wanted to become a Quincy but the other thing was I'm sure Rio Ken said I'm I have no the Quincys are gonna die with my dad I have no I don't wanna become a Quincy sort of thing so he clearly that clearly never stuck because you could see he had the bow and arrow ready. To save his son, uh, save his son. The other thing, going back to what Shinji had mentioned, is that he needs to, Ichigo needs to figure out how to control his um, spiritual pressure because anyone can sense it. This goes back to how when he was in the world of the living, back way back in the beginning of the Soul Society arc, where hollows are attracted to high spiritual pressure. So essentially, is what Shinji saying? Um, is it? Um, Ichigo that's causing these hollows to appear because the hollows are appearing and if you remember they were gone for the whole summer um, or majority of the summer they were gone so I don't know from when they had left to when the Soul Society arc finished Ichigo wasn't there so Ichigo being back and not only him being back in the world of the living but he, he has hit Bunkai he is now out his, his powers are exponential you know his powers have, have grown greater you know he trained with um he retrained to become a soul reaper with um Ud, not Uryu, um Urahara and on top of that retrained to become another soul reaper with not with another soul reaper he retrained to become to hit Bankai with um Yorichi. so his power has grown exponentially um and maybe that's what he was trying to tell him he's the one that's literally causing the hollows and menos grandes and things that appear in the world of the living so that's really interesting i wonder again um shinji said at the end that you don't belong to them basically he even said that you know he even said i hope we could be good friends you know you belong with us so does he mean them as in the soul society the, the soul reapers because not everyone is this facade thing where they're They've got the hollow mask, uh, the people, the humans. So I don't know what he's essentially talking about when he says you don't belong. But at this current moment in time, I want to know what Ryoken has been up to. Um, in terms of he seems like him and his son have been estranged. So I don't think, even after the death of his grandfather, uh, I don't think Uru has been living with his dad. Um, so it's quite interesting to see where that relationship, that dynamic is going to go. And... Um, Secondly, what's going to happen to Paul Cohn because he's now up against um, Grand Fisher or built, buffed up Grand Fisher. Uh, but no, that was it. That was a really good. Those were really good two episodes. Let, like I said, let me know down in the comments below. I did notice the other uh, modified souls, the mod uh, stuffed dolls that was at the end of 109. Um, so let me know if there's anything else of interest I should know from that previous arc. Like I mentioned, I will go back and watch everything. Um, after I've finished the main storyline. But that was it. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.